Hey everybody, and welcome to another PSPP tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to be talking about the last of the t-tests, paired samples t-tests. So here I have some data open, and uh, we are going to jump right into it. Now this is going to be sort of a can. This is real data, but it's going to be sort of a canned. Uh, paired samples t-test like i'm just gonna compare two variables that uh participants did it's not really a good uh accurate depiction of variables that you would use in a paired samples t-test but it will show you how to do the um how to input them into the uh menu bars the menu options and then interpret the output and whatever the output tells you. So let's jump right into it. So here I have um, my data open. And what we're going to do is we're going to go out to analyze as we have been. We're going to go to compare means. Okay. And then we're going to click on paired samples t-test. So this is a t-test where we have a pair of variables for one person. And we're going to see whether or not those measurements are different from each other by using the mean difference divided by the difference standard deviation and we're going to see what or standard error technically and we're going to see whether their different scores are different from each other <laughs> so essentially does does time or my intervention play a role in um, in measurement changes? So we'll see how that happens. This is a very simple interface, uh, and this interface does carry over to newer programs like JASP and Jamovi. And really what I'm going to do is take um, how somebody did on the first CRT problem, and then we are going to compare it to the second one. Now, uh, variables, variable one, variable two, these are our test pairs. There, you cannot run a, a pair samples t-test if you don't have a variable in this column and you don't have a variable in this column because it won't, the, the okay would be grayed out. But like the previous like the previous tests, right, we can have as many as we want, and these will be run independently of, of each other. And these pairs will be uh, these pairs will be completely different um, tests from the ones before it or the ones after it. I'm just going to do the one pair, but we could do uh, CRT1 to CRT3. We could do CRT2 to CRT3. We, 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 I mean, we can make as many pairs as we want here. Before we jump into OK, because that's the only parameter we have to uh, specify in this uh, dialog box, I do want to talk about options. Again, it's going to be the same as the other t-tests here, which is slim to none. We can change our confidence interval, and we can determine how missing values are handled. So we either exclude analysis by analysis or we exclude list wise. And so that would depend on how many what, where the vis missing values are per pair. Um, we will do it either by analysis, how many rows we have in this test pairs box, or we include it list wise. If any single case has a missing value in any variable that's in this box, then we get rid of it. I like to leave it as analysis by analysis because that makes each test more robust. If I were doing more, it would make each test robust. And I think that's useful. So let's click continue here and then let's click OK. It will run it. Now let's click over to the output. Uh, and here we are with our t-test. So t-test is the main test. It is the pairs function. And so we're going to do CRT1 with that's the the proper term here with CRT2 and paired um, as the final bit of syntax. Missing is by analysis and criteria is confidence intervals 0.95. Now, as we expand onto um, bigger tests, the criteria here will give us more options. We can expand on that. So we get three boxes for these 
tests. And I, again, I only did one pair, but if there were multiple pairs, they would be demarcated or delineated by this first column of the table and which pair they are. So if I had two pairs, three pairs, four pairs, five pairs, six pairs, etc., it would be uh, in this singular table, but then they would be divided by what pair they are. Okay, and so here I have my pairs. Uh, here are their individual statistics. 0.39, or so N, 0.39, 2.2 is their mean and their standard deviations and their standard errors of the means. And then we can move on to correlations because this is a part of paired samples t-test. You can correlate how well each measurement is with each other, how good each measurement is with each other. So you want to see a significant correlation here because that would mean that uh, people are are not answering these questions wildly different from each other. Um, it's just a good check. Now, SPSS and PSPP are the only one, uh, the only statistics programs that I've used that show this correlation. It's not generally super important for a paired samples t-test. You won't see it reported in any uh, uh, journal, to be fair. Um, but if you do have a problem with it, then there, there, there would be something to explore uh, as far as data cleaning or um, assumption checks, that sort of thing. Now, one of the uh, uh, data checks that we don't get here is whether or not these are normal. This or this uh, different score is normal, normally distributed. You would have to use uh, the descriptive stats to find out what the skewness and kurtosis is. So just be aware that this module does not give you um, normality or other assumption uh, violation tests the with the exception of the uh, independent samples t-test giving you Levine's test of homogeneity of variance you don't get that here now um, first we get the paired differences and then we'll get the t-test uh, information so the paired difference is 0.2 and that's essentially 0.39 minus 0.2 so this is 0.4 minus 0.2 rounded to two decimal places Okay, and then we get the standard deviation, and then we get the standard error of the difference score average. So the difference score. So the 0.2 is divided by the 0 0.05, and these are the difference scores, okay, because we do 1 minus 2 here. Okay, and we get our confidence interval 0 0.10 and 0 0.29. You can already tell without even looking at the p-value that this confidence interval is showing us that this is a significant uh, test, paired samples t-test. And if we go over to t, we get a t of 4.24 with n minus 1 degrees of freedom, 101, so 102 minus 102. Uh, it's, it's technically n of the different scores. So however many different scores you have, it's you, usually if you have a full data set, usually equal to N of any individual variable in the paired sample. Uh, but in, in this case, it's ND, it's subscript D, minus 1. So that is 101 here. And then we have our p-value, which is always, like I said uh, in previous t-test videos, always a two-tail test, and you cannot change it. It's always a two-tail test. You cannot make a... Um, uh, directional hypothesis test here, a one-tailed test. But we have a 0 .00 for, 0 .000 for our p-value, which just means, in this case, less than 0 .001. Okay? So that is the simple output that you get for a paired samples t-test. And here we have a significant pair here. There's really no interpretation to make of this because it's just one problem to the next problem. The problems are technically independent of each other. I just wanted to show the uh, how, what the output looks like uh, for how to do this test in, S in PSBP. I'm always going to make the SPSS issue because you could literally translate the way you do this <laughs> to SPSS. So I think that's kind of funny. In any case, that's how you do paired sample t-tests in PSPP. If you like this video, please consider leaving a like. If you uh, like this content, please consider subscribing. Leave your comments, suggestions, and feedback down below. Thanks for watching this video. Bye.